On show 478, more Tesla price changes, an Audi plug-in hybrid, and what oil is in your EV? Well, those stories and many more coming up on today's show. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story I can find each day to save you time and searching and hunting through the articles all day. I bring you the best stuff that you need to know. Thank you, as always, to myev.com for helping make this show. That, if you like, is the equivalent of this podcast. They only feature uh, the best EVs, buying and selling and learning about them online as well. Unlike all those other websites which feature lots of fossil cars, you have to sift through those on myev.com, only EVs. Uh, by the way, trying out yet another new microphone. I am a bit of a gearhead, aren't I? Uh, but trying out a new... This one's actually like... You know those like uh, those headsets with the, the microphone included as well? Okay, so I know the quality won't be as good as like my, like my ultimate main microphone in my home studio, but I'm not at home today, and so I'm trying out a, a new toy. So let me know, uh, good, bad or ugly, how you think today's podcast sounds. I do look somewhat like uh, either Madonna uh, with a headset mic on or some sort of American American sports commentator uh, with a big pair of headphones and a massive microphone around the front of them as well. But I think it sounds okay so far, but just trying out some new stuff to see uh, what you think of it. Let's start Tesla. Let's start with another price change. Is this even a big deal or not? Some would say no, some would say yes. Tesla significantly reduced the base price today of its newly upgraded Model S and Model X vehicles that launched only a month ago. With the changes, Tesla also brought back a standard range option for both vehicles at the time, an option that had been on and off the configurator over the past year. For the Model S, it used to start at $78,000, and it offered a range of 285 miles on a single charge. For the Model X, it started at $83,000, and the range is 250 miles. Now, just a few weeks later, configurator updated, and for those people that literally just bought their Tesla and are waiting for it to be delivered, they could have saved a few bucks. The Model S just got cheaper. The base model, that is, the base model. Just the base model only, none of the higher spec ones, but just the base model, down by $3,000. And for the X, $2,000, says Fred Lambert for Electric on an Electric article today. They then updated the article as the day went on. Tesla provided a statement, and by the sounds of it, I don't think Tesla would like me putting this story first on today's podcast, and you'll hear why. Tesla said this, and I quote, Like other car companies, we periodically adjust pricing and available options. These pricing changes represent a reduction of about 2% to 3% in X and S prices. Last week, we raised US Model 3 prices by 1%. By any reasonable standard, these small changes are not newsworthy. End quote. There you go. I think they are a little bit newsworthy. Tesla politely disagrees. A comment from one of the uh, the, the, the always busy comment section of various online websites. Uh, from Electric, I found a guy called Guy Hall who summed up really well what I think about this. And so rather than me giving you my opinion, I'll give you Guy's opinion because we're in, we're in agreement on this. Guy said, two buyers getting the same price on a car from a dealership is about as likely as paying the same price for your airline ticket as the person sitting next to you. Price adjustments from dealerships and manufacturers are frequently going on behind the curtain. At least Tesla's changes are transparent and in the open. I would take transparency over arguing with a dealership hoping I get a fair price. You could argue that the transparent pricing could affect your resale value, though keep in mind it could go either way, says Guy. And that's true. The world's pricing is now governed by algorithms, depending on whether you're a return visitor to that airline's website, whether you're a new visitor to the airline's website, whether you visit an airline website and click a series of buttons to go exactly where you want to go, that affects the price. But if you go to an airline website and then maybe click around it, maybe do some browsing, try a few options, look at a few destinations and then end up getting a price for a flight, that will give you a different price for the exactly the same flight. These algorithms are running in the background on all websites to do track the customer journey. 
and try and work out how much money they can get out of you before you go, no, that's too much. So it's one of the things that I always do. Look at prices on different browsers, different devices, and if I can, on different IP addresses. So if I'm at home, I will clear the cookies on my phone, go on to 4G, so I'm not on my home Wi-Fi, and I'll look exactly the same. And sometimes the price is different, whether that's a variety of things that you're buying. So you could argue really that Tesla, even though they're changing their pricing monthly now, and they used to be the same for a very long time, even that is better than it's being transparent. But you make your mind up and you let me know your thoughts. You can get involved with the show anytime you want to. Let's move on to Audi, and this time not the e-tron, but let's talk a plug-in hybrid. Following the launch of the e-tron Quattro and the China-only Q2L e-tron, now we're talking about Audi getting another electric motor in their cars, unlike the other two, the new Q5. Technically, if I give it its full name, the Q5 TFSI e Quattro. It retains the combustion engine to form a plug-in hybrid powertrain. It combines a turbocharged 2-litre gasoline engine that develops 248 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque with an electric motor offering up 141 horsepower, says Motor1.com. Now, Audi says the plug-in hybrid setup enables the mid-size luxury SUV to get a total of 362 horsepower. Not to 60 time then, 5.3 seconds, obviously helped along the way by the electric motors. Top speed, 149. And when you think about it, that's a pretty heavy vehicle, big Audi Q5, with only a small four-cylinder engine. So the electric doing a lot of the heavy lifting on that. The zero emissions range is guaranteed by the lithium-ion battery pack of 14.1 kilowatt hours. And it's underneath the floor of the boot, by the way, not underneath the passenger's. About two and a half hours to fully charge the batteries through a uh, 400 volt outlet and a household socket will take you about six hours depending on where you plug that into. I'll pop a link to Motor One in the show notes for you. Now, let's talk about the oil in your EV. Yeah, it's got some somewhere. This was kind of news to me. Like, I'm not really an expert. Like, I love EVs, but I'm not working out what's inside an electric motor. I know that my car has a motor and that's all I need to know. I don't desperately need to know what's inside it. Well, it turns out that lots of people are doing thinking about the oils that are used in EVs. Shell has launched a new range of fluids designed to work in battery electric vehicles. Uh, they're called e-transmission fluids. And so even things like the transmission still needs some lubrication. Uh, they've branded them e-transmission, e-thermal and e-grease. And it's going to make battery EVs perform better more efficiently and therefore go further using less energy from the battery. Part of Shell's drive to support electric mobility, they say, in this press release I got sent, uh, Shell's is, uh, Shell is continuing to explore new ways to serve EV drivers, they say, on the first fill fluids. Um, and a first fill fluid is what goes in in the factory. They say they're meeting a broad range of performance requirements. Their range of e-fluids help EVs reduce their life cycle emissions by being more efficient, extending the lifespan as well. And also they're launching new lubricants specifically for hybrid vehicles as well. So if you aren't the world's biggest fan of oil companies and you thought by buying an EV, then maybe uh, you uh, stick in one to the oil companies, it looks like they're still some somewhere in our cars, but maybe someone who's more technically minded than me can tell me exactly where oil is in my EV. Is it the motor? Is it the transmission? Let me know. Moving on to Honda and the Honda E, and this is a car that's got many people excited. It's been a long time in the making. Reservations now finally open for the Honda E. The Japanese brand's cute little urban EV has got many people excited. First introduced back in 2017. We heard that pre-orders were open last week, and now you can do a full order of the Honda E. It says Greg Potts at TopGear.com. Honda had 24,000 expressions of interest after the unveiling, 6,000 from the UK. Now known simply as the Honda E, Still no word on that final price. We know more details now. 125 miles, rear-wheel drive, and up to 80% battery charging in 30 minutes. Very much meant to be a, a runaround for the city. So more details coming on that, making the news today. Well, China and Japan is our next subject. China's new energy vehicle maker, BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams, has delivered its electric buses to Japan's Oze National Park, or Oze National Park. The Shenzhen headquarters company said today, and reported by China.org.cn. Well, the J6 model of the BYD bus 
is designed for Japan. It's designed for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games as well. It has a compact body to enhance accessibility on Japan's narrow streets and a low floor to cater for the aged, aged society of Japan. Easy access. Well, it's the fourth time that BYD has now delivered electric buses to Japan, the company said, noting that at present, one in every three electric buses in Japan is made by BYD. As of March this year, BYD has 50,000 electric buses on the roads around the world in 50 countries and 17,000 domestically in China. Moving on to Charger news, and I think I pronounced them Efasec, E-F-A-C-E-C, Efasec maybe, uh, have released their new chargers. Many of those uh, original ones are here in the UK. Some of them are pretty old ones as well, and so some of them are needing to be replaced, or at least needing a good old update, with things like a colour touchscreen is one of the updates to these new chargers on the Generation 2 ones. Significant improvements, they say, to the software and hardware. The unveiling was today on May 21st in Lyon in France at the EVS 32 fair. Well, there are 4,000 fast charging FSEC chargers on five continents, mostly in Europe and America, and they are investing in their new range, which does go up to 50 kilowatts. That seems to me like it's not massively future-proof. I thought they would go faster than that. I think 50 kilowatts is kind of existing technology. What do you think about that? Finally... An article today all about how to market EVs. One of the things that we say, you know, we, I, I hate the use of the phrase self-charging hybrid. Toyota started it. Loads of others have followed now. There's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. They're petrol charging hybrids because they won't move until you put petrol in them. And yes, they'll do a little smidgen of regen from the braking, a tiny amount compared to a full battery electric vehicle. But it's a marketing phrase that seems to be going down pretty well. It frustrates the hell out of me, but... It seems to be working with a certain sector of their audience. But how should you market EVs or hybrids outside of the group of you and I? Because you and I know a lot more than than kind of average member of the public, right, looking into EVs. Automakers have had a real difficulty explaining the unique benefits of owning a plug-in hybrid electric car. The Chevy Volt, with a V, quickly became the best-selling plug-in car in the US, and it held that title until it was dethroned by the Model 3, says InsideEVs.com. According to auto traders Michael Harley, Chevy marketers were never properly able to educate their customers. Overall, marketing and advertising for the Volt needed to focus on education as much as it did traditional selling. A lack of proper customer perception played a large role in the demise of the Volt, which is now out of production. Chevrolet Marketing Director of Cars and Crossovers, Steve Majoros, said GM focused too much on the technical aspects of the car rather than the promise of what it delivered, the clean, environmental, friendly driving experience. Rather, they went technical on all those things. What do you think? Where do you stand? I like to know the technicals, but I know I'm not everyone. And you can see that with Tesla, for instance, removing or changing the way they badge their cars as standard range and long range rather than, you know, P80D, 90D or P100DL kind of thing, which is super techy. And now they're just simple names, long range, standard range, standard range plus. They're taking the numbers away. They're detecting it. What do you think of that? What would you prefer? Let me know anytime and take part in this week's question of the week. Thanks to myv.com. There's that as a brand new question of the week. Keep your comments coming in. It's a good one. Does the location of production influence your buying decisions? Where your EV is made, do you care? And why, if it does? Does the location of production affect your buying decisions and why? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Time for the Andy bit. Thank you very much to 214 patrons of the show. You keep me going. You fund the show. And you certainly keep me busy making podcasts every single day. Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily if you want to know more. If you want to send me a, a story anytime, you can do it through Patreon. Do it through the email. If you see something, you can ping me a note on Twitter or Facebook if you want to. I'd love to hear from you. There are 477 previous shows. I know I've been a busy boy. 477 previous shows, but I'm excited about all the new ones we're going to make over the coming weeks and months and hopefully years. And so please do subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to get them first and free and automatically. Say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.